Here we are. Nice sunny Sunday morning. And I'd like to show you my solar system that I just recently put up. So anyways, we are on top of the garage roof. And there is my solar panel. It's a 190 watt 12 volt slash 24 volt panel. Um, it's about the largest 12 volt panel that I could find. So I'm hoping that uh, it's large enough for what I want. If not, I'll just have to sweet talk the wife into getting another one. <laughs> but uh, I'm hoping it'll it'll do what I need it to do. The goal was to uh, to run my two yard lights off of solar because uh, they run sometimes 10 hours a night and uh, it's every night so I thought it would make a pretty sizable dent in our, our utility cost if I could get those off and not only that but uh, as you can see we live out in the county and the power does go off out here uh, every now and then and sometimes it can be out for up to five hours or so so it would be nice to have a, a backup system in place uh, just for when I need it and uh, something that I don't have to worry about putting gas in keeping gas fresh and stuff like that maintaining a generator I would I, I think this is a much better solution a little bit more expensive but over time I think it's a it's a better solution so there you are from the rooftop of Eric's garage on a nice sunny Sunday morning. I believe it's the 29th of July today. There's my, there's my tree that I planted. Three years ago that was a sapling. really taken off. So let's go down into the garage and uh, I can explain the rest of the system to you. So this is my solar system. It's my charge controller. It's a TriStar 60 amp controller, PWM controller, disconnect for my batteries from the charger. I still need to put a disconnect on the solar side of the charger yet, but that will come. And then over here, I have my inverter. Batteries are at 12.6 volts. It's a 1500 watt 12 volt inverter. Well, it's a 1500 watt inverter and it's a 12 volt DC inverter. My whole system is set up for 12 volts. I've got a 150 amp DC breaker to protect the inverter. I um, really hate to have something go wrong and burn my garage down. And all the cabling on the batteries is uh, 4 aught cables. So, anyways, it's charging up pretty good. This, uh, I ran my uh, yard lights off it last night, and um, when I got up this morning, they were the battery was down to 11.9, and it's, uh, it's just about 10 o'clock in the morning now and the batteries are now 12.6 and I believe last night when I turned the inverter on the batteries were at 12.6 also so I've pretty much gained back what I've used last night and it's only 10 o'clock in the morning okay so how this is hooked up is this cord here that's plugged into the wall 
is what feeds all the stuff that I'm going to run off of the inverter. Right now it's plugged into the wall. That's a that plug is off the grid. So if I want to run stuff off the inverter, I just take this plug, plug it in the inverter, turn the inverter on. We have 12.8 uh, volts now. It's right around 11 o'clock in the morning, so voltage is coming up nicely. And then, uh, so that receptacle down there is now running off of the inverter. And this switch, which runs these, these lights. Okay, so the idea is, is uh, I don't have to turn on all the lights in the garage when I want to work in the shop if I'm just working at the bench here because it's almost a kilowatt to light this garage with the lighting that I have that's my next project is to fix that so anyways so I'm powering those off of it and I'm also running all of the lighting upstairs in my garage all the lighting up here is off of the uh, is off of that cord And also my yard lights run off of that cord. So that's how I've done it. And if I, for some reason, if there's something wrong with the system or whatever, I can just put that plug into here, plug it back into the grid, and now everything is on the grid. Um, and that's it. That's how she's wired up. Here I've got uh, my battery bank. Only the first three batteries are hooked up. The first battery is a golf cart battery, deep cycle golf cart battery. It's a, it's a club car which is a battery by Trojan made specifically for a club car golf cart. And uh, the other two in the middle are uh, marine deep cycle batteries that I've salvaged out of the recycling center and rejuvenated. And this one here, this is also a club car uh, golf cart battery but it's a little under volts it's right now it's it's only sitting at about 10 volts and I can't seem to get it to come up so it's got a bad cell so I'm in the process of trying to rejuvenate that and that's just a, a starting battery that I keep around just in case somebody needs a boost so it's just a good place to keep it so there's my system lots of heavy cables and uh, looking pretty good so just a word about cables. Um, inverters take an enormous amount of electricity from the batteries. Um, this inverter will take up to 150 amps of 12 volt current to produce 1500 watts of AC current. That's a lot of current. And if you use small cables feeding your inverter, it's never going to produce that much electricity for you. You're going to have problems basically you're going to starve the inverter of what it needs. I'm using 4-op cable, basically welding cable, and um, it's not cheap, I'll tell you that. <laughs> it's not cheap, but I'm never going to have problems feeding this inverter with electricity. Um, I've already tested it, it'll do 150, or sorry, 1500 watts, no problem. It'll start a 1000 watt microwave with, with, without even blinking. It, uh, it's not a problem. And I've done a lot of research on inverters and the biggest complaint I have is from people saying that their inverters won't put out the rate of power but then you look at what they're using to power it and they're just using regular 14 gauge household wire. So it's, it's, it's important to use heavy gauge multi-strand cables. Same thing coming from your charge controller. No solid core cables. It's all multi-strand cables for DC current. Uh, these are our eight gauge wires going in and out of the charge controller. And for 60 amps, that's sufficient. So what will happen is, is you get too much internal resistance through the wires and you're just basically creating a lot of heat instead of charging your battery. So, so cables are very important. So I'm running two yard lights off of the solar system. This is one of them. It used to have a 175 watt mercury vapor bulb in it, but I've converted it to a 45 watt uh, compact fluorescent. 
puts out, uh, I would say, 90% of the light that the other bulb put out at a quarter of the cost. So that's the one that I run. Okay, and there's the other yard light. This one used to be a 65 watt mercury vapor and I swapped that out for a 23 watt compact fluorescent and uh, it actually puts out more light than the other bulb and it's running at one third the original cost. So these are the two bulbs that I run off of the off of the solar panel and uh, I'm hoping to have something a little bit more reliable and uh, like I said, also a, a good battery backup for when the power goes out. So there you have it, my solar system in a nutshell. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope it was informative and uh, I'd appreciate some comments. Anyways, until next time, take care. Good boy, eh? Good boy.